guys, Macy Lou here, and in today's video, I'm going to be discussing my current oil painting supplies. So, these paintings that you see behind me are all oil paintings, except for these two pieces right here. Um, this is actually a sketchbook that I painted in acrylic on the canvas cover. This is also acrylic on a gesso board. All the other four pieces here are oil paintings behind me. So I thought today I would share with you my oil painting supplies. Now these pieces are in different stages of completion. This piece right here is the newest piece that I've started. She has about one full layer and a little bit of a second layer on her. And that piece back there, the small piece, um, she is completed. Um, she's just not varnished yet. This girl is also completed and just not varnished yet. Um, the girl with the uh, pink and reddish tones and the yellow. Um, this girl down here with the blue and pink hair, like the blue and magenta hair, she is not completed. She is probably in layer two stage. Um, some of some of this has one layer on it and some of it has a little bit of the second layer on it. So these two pieces are kind of in similar stages right now. Um, she's got more development on her face than her though. But I just wanted to point that out. Like I said, these two are acrylics so they have nothing to do with oil but I just wanted to have lots of my piece, or not lots, but some of my pieces in the background just to kind of show you. I want to have like a more interesting backdrop or just a plain backdrop. I'm thinking about getting just a white or pink or something sheet or paper to put behind me because I want my videos to be as high quality as I can actually feasibly do. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys an update on, you know, the channel for just a second and kind of that I do have some things I'm wanting to kind of try. But anyway, this video is all about my oil painting supplies. So first we're going to talk about these paints. Now I use Gamblin oils. They are the Gamblin Artist Oil Colors. And since they're kind of pricey, what I do is I just by like certain colors and I mix them together to create all the other colors that I need to use. I've done this with all paints that I've ever bought. I've done it with watercolor. I've done it with um, acrylic. I mean, the idea is the same. You don't have to buy every freaking color in the rainbow to get the color that you want. You mainly just need your basic primary colors and maybe one or two of the kind of more difficult colors to mix. For example, what I have, and I know this is not probably what other oil painters do because I know a lot of oil painters have like a cool yellow and a warm yellow and a, and a, a cool red and a warm red. But instead of approaching it that way, I kind of just got the basics because I'm on a really tight budget. So I'll share with you guys exactly what colors I have. And as you can see, I have a broad range of colors that I'm able to mix and create. And I'm not really that limited. But I do plan to expand my colors as I go. I'm one of those artists that will get art supplies gradually. I don't really believe, you know, since I have a specific budget, you know, uh, meaning that I'm not just buying everything at once. So if you're on a tight budget, then this video could be beneficial if you're wanting to really get serious about oil, oil paints. Now, if you just want to dabble in oil paints and you just want to do it as a hobby, and you just want to practice, I highly suggest don't buy the expensive oil paints right off the bat like these. If you don't plan to go into it as a career and you don't plan to contact galleries about your art and you just want to kind of do it for fun and you just want to do it as a hobby, then don't worry about paying the price for these paints. If you just want to make the, these paintings for yourself for fun or maybe even just for your mom or something, like. You don't have to spend crazy money on these paints. Now, 
obviously, I'm not sponsored by Gamblin. Um, I mean, you can probably tell by what I'm saying right now. But Gamblin, though, is my favorite um, that I've tried so far. And I've only tried a couple different brands, or maybe like three different brands. But Gamblin so far is my favorite. I've had some issues with other oil paints that were less quality. And the, the paints just didn't do what I wanted them to do. They weren't... They just didn't um, mix very well. They, they looked kind of muddy and bland. And I don't really know how to explain it. Um, and I don't know where those paints are right now. So I can't really do a demonstration. But um, I just wanted to point that out that... It is worth it to invest in these pricier art supplies only if you really, really, really um, are striving to make it into a career. But, like I said, if you're just starting out, if you're super, super new, if you are just experimenting, trying to figure it out, and if you are just doing it as a hobby, don't go out and spend all of this money on this. Because these cost, like, I think these cost me between five and eight dollars a tube. Yeah, it adds up. So I have Burnt Umber. Burnt Umber is a really important color for skin tones and things like that, um, but you may not even have to have it um, because there may actually be other ways to create your skin tones. Um, but Burnt Umber is something that I learned through other artists is a very good color to get for, you know, just a baseline for skin tones. Of course you're going to have to add other colors to this. Um, I'm not saying use this straight from the tube as a skin tone. I'm saying this is a good just baseline brown color, okay? Um, to just kind of get started with some kind of neutral skin tone. And the next thing that I have to show you guys is a word I can't pronounce, so I'm going to really butcher this, but quinacridone red. Uh, quinacridone red is really nice because it's a very vibrant red, and it's also, I would say it's probably the closest to like a primary color red um, in my price range because these were, these were actually the cheaper versions of the, the, uh, artist oil colors for Gamblin. Meaning, you, there's lots of different colors that you can purchase in these Gamblin artist oil colors. Um, but some of them are more pricey than others. And so, like, some other kinds of red could be, like, double the price or something, just as an example. Or maybe not double the price, but, you know, a couple dollars more, maybe three dollars more. So I was always looking at the colors that were on sale, the colors that were cheaper, um, because I really wanted the artist grade uh, paints, but I still was on a tight budget. So I went ahead and got Quinacridone Red, and it is a light a light fastness one level and it's transparent. So just to let you guys know, be aware of what it says on the back. It'll say, you know, whether it's opaque or transparent. This is very important and I wish I would have known more about this when I purchased these colors, but just keep in mind what you're wanting to do with the colors because it, some colors you may want them to be more pigmented, I mean more opaque, and some of them you may want to be more transparent. So I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up on that. And just to kind of come back to this Burnt Umber color since I forgot, um, it is Light Fastness 1 and it's semi-transparent. So the next color that I got um, is, and I got this because I use a lot of pink and purple in my pieces. And since I use a lot of pinks and purples and in that color family, I wanted a specific color that could get me closer to the purple family. And so I got Quinacridone Violet. Now Quinacridone Violet is a beautiful color. It's a deep purpley pink. It's actually, I think it's actually darker than what it shows on the tube. But I really love this color a lot. It's Light Fastness Level 1, and it's transparent. 
The next color I want to show you guys is Pothalo Blue. And I'm actually not sure if it's pronounced Pothalo Blue or if it's supposed to be Thalo Blue. So I may be butchering the name again, but um, it is Light Fastness Level 1 and it's transparent. Now, another thing that I forgot to mention is there's a series number on the bottom left of the front of the tube. And this series number may also kind of help you know like how costly the tube's going to be and like the, if it's going to be on sale or whatever. I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly what the series number is, but I feel like it kind of had something to do with the pricing as well. So just to kind of explain... Um, Thalo Blue, or Pathalo Blue, however it's pronounced, is Series 2. Quinacridone Violet is Series 3. Quinacridone Red is Series 3. And Burnt Umber is Series 1. Alright guys, the next color I have is Radiant Yellow. Now, Radiant Yellow, is this is Series 2, and it is Light Fastness 1, and it's Opaque. And from what I've seen around the internet, having an opaque yellow is super important. But another thing that's important, supposedly, and I haven't ran into the issue yet, but supposedly it's also very important to have not only a cool tone yellow, but a warmer tone yellow. And to be completely honest with you, I think that my yellow... I think my yellow is just like a mid-range yellow. I actually don't even honestly know if this is considered a warm or cool yellow. Um, normally I can tell if something's a warm color or a cool color, but for some reason with yellow, I have a little bit of trouble figuring out if it's a warm or a cool yellow. So if you know down in the comments, you can go ahead and let me know if this is warm or cool. But to me, all yellow is warm. I don't know, girl. Like, <laughs> But um, I've heard that you can actually get a warm or a cool yellow, and it's better to have both. I only have one yellow, so it might be limiting me, but I haven't noticed any issues so far. But you got to remember, it all depends on what color palettes you typically use. All artists are different. They all have a different workflow. They all have a different color scheme that they use and their color schemes could vary from time to time. Some artists go from pastels to deep, dark colors. Some artists go from bright, vivid colors to more neutral colors over time. Artists change, uh, art supplies change, and artist studios evolve as they grow as artists. So the last color I have, and it's the most important color, I think, <laughs> is Titanium White. So Titanium White is super important. It helps you get those beautiful highlights, those sparkles in the eyes, all the fun stuff that I don't know about you guys, but this girl right here is obsessed with. But my white is actually Gamblin 1980 oil colors, and I think that that is the student grade. So, just so you guys know, I am using a student grade white because white is so important. Now, this titanium white is series 1. Like I said, it's the 1980 and it is light fastness level 1. And um, it doesn't say opaque or transparent, but I'm assuming it's opaque because I haven't had any issues with it seeming too transparent. But I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, I get the student grade of the white because, in my opinion, white is something you can't really screw up. <laughs> uh, white is white. So, I get the student grade because I want to get the big tube of it, and I'm on a budget, and so that is just my little hack. But, another cool thing that happened is I shop for my oil paints at Jerry's Artorama. And what was really cool is they were having a sale one day when I was getting some of these more, you know, these colorful colors, you know, like the pink and the red and everything. And I actually, they were having a sale to where if you bought those, you got a free tube of titanium white. And it is the artist grade titanium white in series one. And it is Light Fastness One Opaque. So I haven't cracked this one open yet because I'm going to finish up the big tube first, 
But I actually now have an artist grade titanium white, but it is a small tube. So again, I my little hack is to get the student grade white and to um to just use it instead because then you can get the bigger tube. So I hope that is helpful to you guys. Um the next items are really just paint brushes and things like that. So um, let's see. Now I have way too many paint brushes to show you guys every single paint brush, but here are my paint brushes. Just so you guys know, um, I haven't used them all yet. Like I haven't used this really long liner brush yet. Um, it's a, but, but the brand of these orange brushes that you see here are the, they're called the Fine Touch. It's probably just like an off brand. I don't think the Fine Touch is like I don't know, you guys. Honestly, I don't know all the brands of brushes, but uh, I don't think that the fine br the the fine touch brand is like super duper like expensive or anything like that. Like, I don't think I spent that much on these. Um, and the other brand I have is Master's Touch, which I know is more of a cheaper brand. Now, now these Master's Touch brushes are like called mini brushes because I guess because they're like kind of shorter and they're rounded. I don't know. They were interesting, and I so I purchased them. Um, da, 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 da. Here's the package that they actually came in. Um, it's just called a mini brush set. They were ten bucks for for all of the darker colored brushes here. Sorry, I have all these mixed brushes, but basically they all came in this little package, and they were super cheap. Ten dollars for a nine pack. Of course, they're not the best quality. I'm already having issues in fraying with this brush here, but it's okay. I can still use it for certain things, so it's not like it's completely a waste. But, um, I think my favorite brand of brushes is Royal and Langnickel, um, but I don't really have the package over here to show you guys. I have a new package of brushes that I haven't even cracked open yet. And they're Royal and Lang Nickel. But um, I do plan to purchase more brushes in the future uh, from Royal and Lang Nickel that are going to be uh, Filbert's, Filbert brushes because I've learned that Filbert brushes are my favorite. And I think a lot of oil painters uh, that paint this type of art, you know, where it's like the pretty girls and the pretty hair and like surreal settings and stuff, I think a lot of them like Filbert's. And I'm learning that I'm the same way, actually, so I may be purchasing some new filbert brushes soon, because uh, those are the ones that get the most damage done. But the next thing I have is just this um, glass scraper, I think is what it's called in the stores. Um, I got this from like Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. It is literally just a glass scraper uh, that you would use, I don't know, to scrape decals off of your glass window or something of your car. I don't know. But I actually use it to scrape my paint palette. So I get all of the dried oil paint off and I just have to replace the blade whenever it gets too dull to scrape. Um, I've recently replaced it so it's actually doing pretty good right now. So I really, really love this. It has a nice little gripper sides to it and it's really comfy to use and it's got this little safety lock feature thing. Um, so, but yeah, I would still keep it out of the reach, out of reach of children though because it's not hard to unlock it. You just push in and pull up on it. So yeah, just FYI, but I don't have any kids so I don't have to worry about that. And the next thing that I have to show you guys is my paint palette. Now my paint palette is really really simple. It's just an old frame with old glass in it that I did not use for anything and I just decided to turn it into a paint palette. Now this idea has been floating around YouTube for like years now. Um, I think Lena Danya and Happy D Artists have both talked about it, but I think a lot of them tape, like put tape or paper around the corners to not get cut. But since this frame was so old and I wasn't going to use the frame either, I just kept the frame on the, around the glass. I mean, simple. So I don't have to tape the edges or worry about getting cut on the glass or anything like that. The frame is just intact. It's basically just everything's there. 
I used the backing of the frame as my neutral gray tone. <laughs> I mean, super simple, super great, um, super, super easy. So the next thing I use for oil painting is my Gamsol, which is a an odorless mineral spirit. Um, and it's empty right now, <laughs> but this is what it would normally be in this container in the store. Um, I think I get these at Jerry's Artorama as well. And what I actually have been doing lately is I eat a lot of spaghetti, to be honest with you guys, but it is veggie spaghetti, so it's a little bit healthier than regular spaghetti. But I recognize it's not the most healthy thing in the world. But it is veggie spaghetti, just just FYI. Um, but this, this is the spaghetti sauce container, right? So you can see... It is, in fact, a spaghetti sauce container. Um, yeah, I actually keep a lot of these because not only is it, like, environmentally friendly, you know, keeping as many of these as I can. I can't keep them all. I eat spaghetti way too much to keep every single one. I have several of these lying around for my Gamsol to go in. So I just, I put my Gamsol mineral spirits in here just to kind of, like, you know, clean, quickly clean my brushes off as I go between colors and to um, kind of thin the paint a little bit and make it more usable. So that is what I do and right now it's looking really nasty, I know. Um, I need to actually clean this out or use a new jar. But yeah, that's a spaghetti sauce jar. So that doesn't do the job for my brushes at the end of my painting session. So. I have to use this really strong smelling crap for <laughs> for after I'm done painting. Now, just an FYI, I open my window, I put both of my fans on, that's how I ventilate my space. I highly recommend if you're going to do oil painting, you ventilate your space. Now, since I use Gamsol for the main portion of my painting, I'm actually probably fine anyways, but I still prefer to have my window open. I still prefer to have my fans going. Especially because when I get to the very end of my painting session and I am done painting for the day or for the afternoon or whatever, when I am going to put my paintbrushes away, before I do, I have to use this. This is a silly coil jar and it's the silly coil liquid. Now this stuff stinks. It smells bad, it smells strong, and I really kind of hate the smell. I wish there was an alternative, but this stuff works. This stuff cleans your brushes like crazy good. Nothing else I've tried has worked thoroughly enough. I want my brushes to be clean. I want all of the paint and the pigment out of them because I do not want to ruin my brushes any more than I already do. So it's got a um, coil in there. You guys probably, can you guys even see it? Like there's a coil in there and the whole point is you brush your, you, you wipe your brush along the coil and your paint kind of dissipates and your paint goes down into this as well as this liquid touching your brush breaks up that pigment, breaks up that paint. So, it's really, really helpful to clean my brushes. That is what I, I have to use it. But like I said, I only use it at the very end of my painting session. I don't even get it out of the drawer until I'm done painting because I don't like this to be open any longer than I have to have it open because it smells so strong. Um, yeah, and I think some artists actually don't even use the silly coil liquid. I think some artists put their Gamsol in the silly coil jar, you know, like they just get the jar with the coil, they don't get the liquid, and they just put their Gamsol in it instead of the silly coil liquid, and they wash their brushes that way. I think I may try that one day when this stuff's gone, but I thought I had to buy the silly coil liquid. Um, but I will tell you it works really dang good. So if the Gamsol in this jar doesn't really do it for me, then I'm not, then I'm going to go back to this anyway. So who knows? We'll see. Next thing that I use is I use these 
gloves. Now these are called latex free disp wait yeah latex free disposable gloves. And they're just like some off brand like Kroger brand I think is what they are. And it says one size fits most. Um, I wish that there was a slightly smaller size because these gloves are absolutely perfect except they're just a tiny bit loose on me. But um, you get 40 gloves in this box and they say non-slip grip, wear while using chemical based cleaners. But it also says great for painting. Now this is what I use when I paint oils. I don't wear gloves when I paint with watercolors and acrylics. Now I will wear gloves if I'm doing an acrylic paint pour because you've got to really get your hands up in there and you've got to get all this paint around the edges. So um, I will use gloves on that as well. But for oil painting that's typically what I'm using these for. Now um, another cool thing is I actually reuse them quite often. I typically reuse them until they're just too dirty to keep wearing, but honestly you can reuse these a long time. So 40 gloves is going to last you for a very long time. Um, the only reason why I, you know, am kind of lower, like look, you can see there's a big chunk of them gone, is because I've used them for cleaning, I've used them for painting, I've used them for several different things, and so I don't want to use one pair of gloves for all of that, so I, I've been pulling some pairs of gloves out of there. Um, but another thing I use, which I'm not actually going to get it out because um, it's fumey and I don't have my window open and I don't want that in the air right now, um, but it is a paint bucket. Yeah, a paint bucket. Now, it is a temporary solution, and I don't, I'm not recommending this. I want to have a disclaimer right now. I'm not, I am not a pro at chemicals. I'm not a pro at flammable things. I don't know all my stuff about this, but I do know sorry, I have like a hair, but I do know that you are technically Okay guys, there's some dogs barking in the background, but we're just gonna keep on rolling with this. So my camera ran out of space, so I had to I had to fix that. So I don't know where I ended, but basically I'm not a pro at flammable stuff and chemicals and all that. I just want to put that out there, but to be safe, I use a, um, since I can't, I, since I haven't been able to locate what I really need to have, which is a big red, um, oh dang, like a chem, like a, a chemical can, like a trash can that's all metal and it's all, um, like flame retardant safe. I don't know what it's called guys and I'm sorry. But there's this trash can you can buy that's very expensive that you really should be putting your used oil rags into. But since I haven't been able to locate it at a store yet, I may even have to purchase it online. It may not even be available online. I've had trouble finding it, like actually being able to buy it. But the next best thing that I've found, which is just a temporary solution, and I'm not saying you guys should do it. In fact, be as safe as possible, okay? Do what you need to do, but this is just what I've been doing. I've been putting my rags, you know, anything that comes in contact with <clears throat> paint thinner and oil paints, I put those rags into a paint can, a paint bucket. And what this means is, you know, you know, like if you're going to paint your house and you have like a, a metal paint bucket that your paint comes in. It's like that, but I bought it brand new with no paint in it and there's no label on it. It's just dogs. <laughs> it's just a regular paint bucket, okay? And I put my dirty rags in there. I put my gloves in there. So it is just a safeguard to help protect your studio, help protect your um, environment from potential hazards because things can happen. You want to keep all that stuff away in a metal container, okay? And, it, and I'm really not even using the right thing because you want it to be sealed and it's very hard. Mine can't be completely sealed because it is just a paint bucket. 
So I really need one of those trash cans. But I just wanted to tell you guys, you are not supposed to just throw these rags in the trash, you know, just willy-nilly, um, in like a normal trash can in your house. You're not supposed to do it. There's, you're just not. Um, you're supposed to use a metal one um, in case of a fire. It's really important, guys. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, so far, I haven't had any issues, but of course, anything could happen. And um, in the future, I do plan to get the proper trash can, rag trash can thingy. And I actually saw some of them at my old job. Uh, and I just, I never thought to ask my boss about it at the time, so I kind of wish I had because they look like they might be the kind I need to find and purchase because they're red, they're big, heavy duty, sturdy, um, you know, trash can looking things. <laughs> I don't know what to call them. I don't think they're called trash cans, but basically you throw your rags in there. That's basically what they're for. You store your rags in there. Um... Another thing is I reuse my rags, so I don't just like throw them away. Like I said, it's you're not really supposed to. I keep them in that can and I reuse them, you know, I reuse my rags. Here's an example of a rag. Um, this one's not been used for oil painting though, but just as an example, like I even use my rags for watercolor, I use my rags for acrylic, but I keep them all separate. So. If I've used it for watercolor, I will not use it for oil and vice versa because, again, it's dangerous. You don't want to have their rags just lying around in your room. So, but if it's watercolor, it can lie around in my room all I want. If it's, if it's acrylic or watercolor, I'm fine. But if it is uh, oil painting rags, you don't want that lying around. But again, I'm not an expert at this. This is just from what I've gathered around the interwebs. And it's just the best knowledge I have. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And I think that's pretty much all my supplies. If there's anything else that you want to ask of me, let me know in the comments. I mean, I've got like easels too and things like that I guess I could talk about. But it's really just this little travel easel, which I use as a desk easel. And then this big easel back here, which I have my camera arm on it right now. But, um, yeah, that's basically it. I can't think of anything else. I'm sure there's something I've overlooked. So just let me know in the comments all about it. And I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! So before I go, I just want to shout out my patrons. They're on the screen right now. And I just want to thank them so much for supporting me. They're always so super kind and sweet, and they help me out a lot. Thank you guys so much for being patrons.